This is the 2021 11-inch iPad Pro. Apple got them out early, I got mine about a week early, which is nice. And I've had a couple of days to really get stuck into this thing and find out exactly what all that extra power that the M1 chip brings means for iPad musicians and iOS content creators alike. And I have some thoughts to share. Not all of them good. You can't talk about these new iPads without talking about the M1 chip. But what can I say that hasn't already been said about the M1 chip? What's that? Nothing. Oh, all right then. If you like this video, then make sure you're subscribed, hit the like button and the notification bell. Just, just kidding. Just kidding. Look, this is the most powerful iPad ever made by a country mile, thanks to the M1 chip. I've got the base 11 inch iPad Pro here, the one with eight gigabytes of RAM, and it's taken everything I've thrown at it without even breaking a sweat. And I have tried to make it sweat. This GarageBand project has multiple tracks, many using AUV3 instruments, and effects fully loaded on each track. It was hard enough to force my 2018 11-inch iPad Pro to break, but it did eventually. Loading up the same project on the 2021 iPad Pro, it plays back without any issues whatsoever. Madness. In fact, you can easily max out GarageBand's 32 tracks and every single effect slot in those 32 tracks. And this thing won't even skip a beat. It's seriously, seriously impressive. In real world terms, that means you're rarely going to see the much maligned optimizing performance message pop up. And as AUV3 instruments continue to develop an increase in sound quality and complexity, your device will be more than capable of keeping up. And this is just the base model. If you go for either the one terabyte or two terabyte storage options on the 11 or 12.9 inch models, you're getting a whopping 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that's more than enough to future proof your device for years to come. If you're thinking about grabbing a 2021 iPad Pro to use as your main content creation device, then you'll be happy to hear that that stellar performance is the same across the board. Apps like iMovie obviously run silkily smoothly, silkily smoothly, and even LumaFusion, which is the premier video editing app on iOS, runs like a dream on this iPad Pro. Multiple streams of 4K video it handles with no issues whatsoever, and export times are vastly reduced. So basically what I'm saying is, obviously, is that this is the perfect option for absolutely everyone, right? Well, no, not really. The main sticking point I have with this device is that at the end of the day, it's still, at the moment anyway, just an iPad. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but the limitations of iPadOS are still certainly right there, still going to be holding you back in some aspects of your workflow. The M1 chip in this 2021 iPad Pro doesn't fix the limitations in the iOS Files app, for example. It also doesn't add anything to any existing apps. So, for example, on this mega powerful 2021 iPad Pro, you'll be using exactly the same version of GarageBand as you would in the £320 base model iPad. Still limited to 32 tracks, still limited to 5 effect slots per track. Now I can almost hear you, yes you, screaming at your phone slash iPad slash computer screen but Patrick, WWDC, what about what's coming at WWDC? 
And yeah, according to various rumours spread around the internet at the minute, it is looking like there will be some form of pro, pro apps coming to this platform in June. But they're not here yet. Like, I'm all for an iOS version of Logic coming at WWDC. I can definitely see that. Same thing goes for something like an iOS version of Final Cut Pro. And it certainly would make sense because at the minute, the sheer power that is in these machines is never going to be used to its fullest. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love this 2021 iPad Pro. I have no regrets about buying it whatsoever. But at the same time, I can recognise that I am nowhere near pushing it to its limits. And I think it's going to be interesting to see what Apple comes up with at WWDC, if anything, that's going to do that. So who are these new super powerful iPad Pros for then? Well, I think if you're rocking an iPad Pro model older than the 2018 model, then you should definitely consider grabbing yourself one of these, budget permitting of course. If you're coming from a base model iPad or an older iPad Air model, then yeah, I think you'll really love the boost in performance that this new iPad Pro will give you. If you're coming off of a fourth generation iPad Air or a 2018 or even 2020 iPad Pro, I think it's a bit of a tougher sell. My first impressions of this 11 inch M1 iPad Pro then, I think it's fantastic, but I don't think it's for everyone. Yes, I'm excited to see what happens at WWDC. Fingers crossed for that iOS version of Logic. As it stands at the moment, these M1 chip equipped iPad Pros run exactly the same apps that your current iPad model does, albeit a bit snappier and a bit smoother. If you're looking for a life changing device that is going to change the way that you make music and create content, then I'd maybe hang on and see exactly what happens at WWDC in a couple of weeks. All right, that's my first impressions of the M1 iPad Pro. Let me know what you think about these incredible new machines down in the comments and make sure you hit the like button if you found this video helpful. Take care of yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.